Assume the position, ladies and gentlemen. It's a new episode of Michael and Benjamin's podcast. I'm doing a new intro. Oh, <laughs> well, Massive apologies to the gang out there. I was not aware this was happening. Welcome back to the tiny room. I'm the Michael of Michael and Benjamin's podcast, and I am joined today, as usual, by the man who have prophesied to be the end of Irish podcasting. It's Benjamin. I'm going to. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to get it right. I'm going on Benji. Uh, yeah, okay. Anyway, I gave up on it. Uh, I'm back. I'm, I'm still in the tiny room. In yeah. the tiny room. You didn't go. No, Rick and Morty van. Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, what are we saying, Ben? We want to tell people it's late when we're here. It's evening. Yep. Yeah. Because we've gone to see a film. Which shall not be named. And we're going to do what in films, film critiquing school we learned not to do is we're going to go and see a film and then immediately talk about it. Yeah, you probably shouldn't do that. You should let your thoughts mellow. Yeah, but yeah. first of all, Ben, before we do any of that, it's time for the theme music. <gasps> Theme music for the podcast We don't actually have any theme music <laughs> Give it a bit of extra welly there today. Uh, You gave the intro a bit of extra welly there, Michael I don't know what to do Benjamin, let me just fill the listeners in A new thing I've learned about Benjamin today is If you ask Ben to source the podcast water He fills the water up to the very brim of the glass, such that it is merely minuscule force that's holding it in and stopping it from overflowing, making it very unpleasant to drink from. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something that I learned about Mick today. Turns out that if Mick finds a woman who's very attractive and you Go mention on. that she might be unattainable, Mick gets well pissed off. I didn't say unattainable. You, you didn't say unattainable, you said unapproachable. And I, said, <laughs> I did say I unapproachable. I do not believe in unapproachable. <laughs> Watch, it's going to come back up over the course of the pod. It's going to be Speaking amazing. Speaking, Ben, as we are now that you've you've fired the first shots across the bow. <laughs> you fired the first shots. Speaking you ma- with you your, your bloody water, your surface tension. Look at, it. <laughs> Look at it. It's like it's been pipetted into the very <laughs> maximum level. I like a full glass, Michael. I like a full glass. Let's move on from two people sniping at each other and talk about... The um, internet sniping each other. Yeah. And yeah, the new trailer that dropped this week. Star Wars. Ben, look, we're not huge Star Wars fans here at the podcast. We're, we, we aren't. We're, we're uh, so I, I would d- refer to myself as an anti-Star Warsian. That's new. But Ben, look, as we said, I've said this every time we've talked about Star Wars. I've se- Star Wars. I've seen them all. <laughs> I will see this one on opening week, so it probably bears talking about. I have not seen the last one. Oh, so I won't see this one probably. Um, what I what I will do mm. is give you a butchered paraphrasing of a famous Star Wars quotes to sum up how I feel about this new trailer. Well, all right, you sound like you have a bit lined up something yep. in my head there. <laughs> Felt like a million neckbeards cried out in agony and were disappeared. I don't know what that's for. It's the a thousand voices cried out and well, what's that one when the planet dies? Leia. Leia's little planet dies. Leia's little planet. They all get silenced. It's oh, in the, the original on. original trilogy. Yeah. They nuke their first planet. Well, they don't nuke it. They, 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 they laser started, beam the yeah. first planet. Yeah, but um, I can imagine that there were a bunch of lads sitting in clothes they've been wearing for quite a while in big comfortable chairs, possibly with Cheeto dust on fingers around the facial region. <laughs> but Ben, these people don't exist. And as... <laughs> they definitely You're do. creating a straw man to <clears> attack. And... All right, As Ray really lined up that look of defiance, and boy, did they center on that in that trailer. Yeah. Oh, you could feel the screams rising. Ben, do Just you think... sheer outrage. Do you think that Ray is going to turn out to be the baddie, and Kylo Ren is going to turn out to be the goodie, and that's going to be the twist? They haven't got the balls to pull that off, Michael. It's J.J. Abrams. It looks like J.J. Abrams is going to be upset that... Who did the second one? Doesn't matter. He was shite. He was Welch. No, he wasn't. Doesn't matter. It looks like he's going to be upset that a lot of his mystery boxes were undone and is going to bring them back. Because we were categorically told in the last episode that Ray is not a Skywalker. And, and yes, this is called Rise of the Skywalker. Yeah. Skywalkers? I don't know. Look, I'm not going to go see it. You can tell me about it when it comes out. I will, Ben. Probably on the podcast. Yeah. How do you feel about it? I, How do you feel about it? Yeah, no, look, the, that new trilogy hasn't really sucked me in, as That's it were. That's right. Um, <laughs> I don't. I wouldn't necessarily say that. I would. Uh, as you know, Ben, I was never a fan of any of the particular Star Wars trilogies. Because you're a man of taste and means. Not always. No, I love Star Trek. Star Trek is infinitely better than Star Wars. Oh wow! Well, okay, that's a that's a battle. That's and I don't like Star line. Trek all that much. Battle line laid down in the sand, Ben. The <laughs> don't other talk about Star- lines in the sand. The we other just came st- from a movie where there was a lot of sand lines. The other <laughs> Star Wars news was the TV show The Mandalorian. 
with with Django Fett's p- people. Yeah, well, Django Fett, if if Django Fett is genuinely a Mandalorian or not is often up for debate. But oh, really? Yeah, it, it's oh, John Favre- John Favreau is doing it. Oh, I like John Favreau. And, and um and Cassian Andor is back from Rogue One, my favorite of the most recent Star Wars films. Which one was Cassian Andor? He was the guy of Spanish. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, he was I the, remember him. Uh, maybe he was Mexican. I think the guy's Spanish, though, isn't he? Of Latino origin. Yeah, he's the Spanish man in space. Spanish man's the spouse. Yeah, he dies. In, in space. He dies in space in, uh, <laughs> in Rogue One, but now he's back. So, you know, any character From development, Espeth. you see, <laughs> any character development. That, I spent the weekend in Madrid, so we should <laughs> we should probably knock that off. Um, any character development they give him in the course of this series will be wasted, because we already know that he's going to die on the planet... Uh, whatever it was called. In a uh, space. In a space. See. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway. <laughs> Let's see, I'm not going to talk about a Star's Wars anymore <laughs> if you're going to keep doing that. So, from from one trailer drop to the next, Michael. What's the uh, next one? Was there other trailer drops? No, it wasn't. Was it trailer, no, it wasn't trailer drop. So, Disney, Bit of news. Disney had a, a press day, Ben, for the launch of their Disney Plus streaming service. We decided not to go. We got passes. We were definitely there, legitimately invited. I was in Madrid. Yeah, so Mick was go. in Madrid, so we couldn't go. And we decided if we can't go as a pair, what's mm. the point at all? What? Plus, what is the point? Plus, I hear they don't fill their glasses to the uh, regulation, regulation surface tension level. Yeah, meniscus point. <laughs> yeah, it's not meniscus, is it? Is meniscus, it meniscus is the clinging thing to the side of the glass. Isn't no, it? that's that's capillary action. No, that's where it crawls. Oh, oh yeah, that is capillary. Action. Meniscus is the fact that it bulges. Oh. Downwards or upwards? Upwards? Probably concave. Is it concave? It's probably concave. It's convex or concave. So boring. Oh, man. <laughs> anyway, uh, what was the big announcement, Michael? They Fuck. well, then first of all, they announced the, the Loki series is going to be called Loki. <laughs> Woo! We knew we knew that, Ben. They also anno- announced that the the show starring the Falcon and the Winter Soldier is going to be a spy. A buddy cop spy yeah. drama called The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I'm amazed that they actually listened to all the fans who said, I want to see the two of them together. And they're like, yeah, okay. I'm, I think that that has been a strength of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and Marvel them. Studios. No, they're recognizing what people want. Yeah, to be fair. They've generally picked up on what people want very well and run with it. They're much better than J.J. J. J. Abrams and his successor. Well, well, we don't know if that's true yet. Because J.J. remember The Force Awakens was pretty well received. People liked The Force Awakens. Did they? People argued that it was a bit of a rehash of A New Hope. Well, it is. Just that movie with new people. Yeah. And a bit more diversity. But that's... Which is no bad thing. You should describe modern movies there. Yeah, I did, yeah. Like, I mean, you could say about a film we saw today that it was just another movie with new people. Yeah, it was just ticking boxes. But not as good. No spoilers there. But they've called it The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Shite name. I don't like a name with two thes in it. Shite. The the most heartening thing about it, though, is the Marvel Studios logo on the logo. It's not Marvel. No. It's Marvel Studios. Uh-huh. And then, as you know, they're two different companies. They are. And Ike Promoter, the man who hates any sort of creative competence. Dickbag. A real son of a bitch is not involved in Marvel Studios. Well, that's even better. So this could be good. Remember a few years ago when we were hoping Daredevil would be like 13 hours of a Marvel movie, but in a series. Yeah. And then it wasn't. No. But it was its own thing. Yeah. But it was fine. It was. But it wasn't what we expected. No. But this might be. Maybe. Probably not, though. Hopefully. (laughs) Anyway, Ben, Ah. the last one (laughs) we were expecting was going to be called The Scarlet Witch and The Vision. Uh, More thes. More double thes. That's too many thes, first of all. But it's not called that, Ben. Have you seen what it's called? The Witch and the Robot? No, keep guessing, because it's it's, it's pretty good. You you just keep guessing. Uh, The Android and the Angry Scarlet Woman? I don't know if he's an android. Oh, no, he's an android. Yeah, he's a robot in the shape of a a man. That is an Synthetic Scarlet? No. The Scarlet Synthoid? No. Fifty Shades of Scarlet? (laughs) Very good. (laughs) Uh, With Scarlet Johansson in it as well sometimes. (laughs) No. Ben, you'll never get it because I don't think your brain reaches this far into the ridiculous. It's called WandaVision. That's shite. Isn't it? That's really shite. It sounds like the evil TV company off of Willy Wonka or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. WandaVision got the secret to the Gobstopper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No. WandaVision. Shite. But it, it might be good. Is it like a One Direction thing? Is it in like One Division? No, WandaVision. Because oh, okay. her name's Wanda Maximoff, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I just, <laughs> just very bad, Michael. Oh, it's just a bad so I'm just trying to understand... 
No, look, Ben, I'm, it's weird. Yeah. Why would you call it that? Why would you, Why would you also call it the Falcon and the Winter Soldier? Surely there's better names there. Yeah. N- neither of those are good. No. The Winter Falcon. The Winter Falcon is a great name. Yeah. Winter Falcon. Just yeah. leave it like that. Or, But that's exactly what they did with WandaVision and we're now mocking that. Yeah, that's true. Um, they could call it... Yeah, but it's not called Salmon. <laughs> salmon, what's your man's salmon name? Bucky. Salmon Bucky. <laughs> salmon Bucky. Salmon Bucky. Salmon Bucky. Sucky is a show that came out. Salmon, 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 salmon Bucky's adventures being Captain America's friends. <laughs> hey, can we both handle this? No, we need Steve. Okay, cool. Let's get Steve. <laughs> that's what they should have called it. Let's get Steve. <laughs> Or we should have just brought Steve. <laughs> presumably. <laughs> presumably he'll be dead by this point of the future, though. <sighs> should have asked Steve. And then, then the final thing, not officially announced, but uh, I don't know what stage this is at, but there's going to be a Hawkeye TV sh- series with oh. a Jeremy Renner about passing the torch to a Kate Bishop. Is that not his daughter? No, Kate Bishop is the Lady Hawkeye. Yeah, no, I know who it is. I just thought they were gonna. Uh, I thought from the trailer we saw where he's bonding with his daughter as she shoots an arrow through a tree that's about two meters away. Well, it's a bit more than that, but it's even two meters would be all right for a beginner. Anyway, um, <laughs> you leave lay off, <laughs> lay off, of lay off beginner archers there, Ben. You son of a bitch. Um, <sighs> Been the heel of this podcast. What are we? What am I saying before you distract Hawkeye me? show. Well, maybe his daughter gets killed by Thanos, and maybe everyone doesn't get brought back, and that's what makes him bond with Kate Bishop. That'd be real good, that, wouldn't it? I would admire the stones it takes to yeah. pull that trigger, and that would like he gets some post traumatic stress. And that so was, some people get him back. I don't know. We can't. I don't know. We're look, definitely getting a Black Panther too somewhere. We're not gonna ah, look. Eric Killmonger has fallen over. <laughs> he's sniffing. He's sniffing claws. There's blood. some serious salad tossing going on in the tiny room today. That's very interesting. Uh, action figures, people. Not we don't, <laughs> we don't have the actors Michael B. Jordan and uh, Gollum in here. Andy Serkis. <laughs> ben. Yeah. Yeah. Look, there's no point speculating about uh, Avengers of Infinity War. Look, we'll there's a bunch it. of announcements. It we'll was see. what it was. Mm. On the other end of things, Mike, we went and saw something today. We did, Benjamin. <laughs> So look, we'll do we'll do what we always do, Ben. We'll do a spoil. Uh, we'll do a minimum of spoilers, then we'll just lay into it. <laughs> yeah, because uh, that's what it's going to be. It's so going to be a laying into. You briefly, very briefly, tell us what is Hellboy and a little bit about his cinematic history. Well, if you very want- briefly, not this film, just what is. If what you is want Hellboy? to learn more about Hellboy, you can listen to our full episode. But for a quick, uh, for a quick, yeah. quick, quick top up, Hellboy is a young guy summoned from another dimension. By an another evil Nazi organization in the 19... 19- another dimension, e. another dimension. Don't yeah. you tell me to stop. I would just like to remind the listeners, he told me to make it a quick summary. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. um, Someone from another dimension should be evil, another should bring dimension. about the apocalypse, but instead becomes a force for good. He, he goes up against all sorts of mythological creatures. It's beautifully drawn by Mike Mignola, yeah. scripted by him as well, with a heavy love of folklore. Very even pacing, long mm-hmm. drawn out story arcs with a lot of character development. But little short stories as but well. But little short stories also, which makes mm. great little filler here and there. Um, to keep your to keep your your whistle wetted, so to speak. And has there has, has there been any films? There have been two films, both by Guillermo del Toro, which previously I was not a fan of, but yeah. now I've seen the light of <laughs> um, due to recent events. Um, Ron Perlman and the guy whose name I never remember, Douglas. Doug Jones? Doug Jones, thank you. Douglas. Um, Doug Jones was We met him. Ian Hurt was in it. A lot of prosthetic makeup. Classic Guillermo del Toro kind of stuff. GTT. Pretty good uh, in in hindsight now with uh, with fresh information. Anyway, we went to see the new one today, Michael. We did, Benjamin. And I tell you what, though. Three of us went and only our friend Shane thoroughly enjoyed it. He absolutely loved it. And that really just speaks to the character of that man. <laughs> he just couldn't get enough of it. Couldn't He's like, get can we see it. it again? Yeah. Can we said... see it again? Bouncing up and down like a puppy with three legs. He loved it, he did. Yeah, he couldn't he get enough. It, so he did. And we said he couldn't go again and he got really upset and threw a tantrum. And so we left he... him in the car park at Liffey Valley. Yeah, he went home. Yeah. He was going to be on the podcast today, but then he went home instead. In a tantrum. Benjamin, did we enjoy it, though? Uh, we didn't. No. We didn't. I no. think I can comfortably speak for both of us on this particular occasion mm-hmm. and say that it was no good. Benjamin, you fill us in very briefly on what the film is about. So, again, we feature on brand new cast, David Harbour, taking over where Ron Perlman, took over, uh, where Ron Perlman left off. Yeah. Ian McShane taking over where... Uh, oh, what's his name? Ian Hurt. 
left off. Two John, Ian's. And Ian for Hurt, Ian. Yeah. John Hurt. Ah, I thought Good it was old Ian Hurt. Ian John Hurt. Ian John Hurt. <laughs> classic. <laughs> classic. Thanks for steering me right there. Um, we don't get an Abe Sapien this time. No, we don't. Or um, Liz Sherman. Or Liz Sherman. Um, instead, what we get is someone who clearly read all the stories and then tried to fit as many of them into the one movie as possible. It was, Ben, quite bitty. Yes, you quite mentioned few, that there were quite a few, few short stories. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of flashbacks. Seems like they tried that. Uh, what I would say, Michael, is that we found out that Hellboy loves exposition in this mm. film. Just loves it. Just just loves a flashback with tons of information crammed in. Um, anyway, look, there's a thing called the Blood Queen. She's a real bad egg. Mm-hmm. She's out there. She was gotten rid of when she's, Merlin was around. She's wearing a flimsy top. She's wearing a flimsy top because Mila Jovovich can only get jobs one way. Hey. Um, <clears throat> no, I won't you respect lay it. Off no, Mila I won't do it. I won't do it. To my mind, a very unapproachable woman. Zing. <laughs> um, but uh, she comes back in a, in a classic movie sense. Except what I found fascinating about this one, Michael, is mm-hmm. there's a lot of build-up. Oh, sorry, there's no build-up to her coming back. She's no real threat because we just get a little bit of exhibition, uh, expositional story that makes her really dodgy and dangerous and yada yada. There's, there's no build-up to the tension. I felt it was very slapped together. There's no tension in the film, Ben. No, there isn't. It's not an series, ounce. It's a series of things that happen. Yeah, we accidentally, Ben, went to see a version with subtitles somehow. Yeah, it was awful with subtitles. It was even worse. <laughs> Very distracting. But sometimes the, it told us what type of music was playing, and it says, Tense, exciting music plays. Heavy metal music blazes. <laughs> Inspirational guitar music soars. Um, it was amazing. It really didn't, though, because it wasn't tense music, was it? Because nothing was tense. No. It also ruined any attempt at humour. Not that it would have landed without subtitles, but when you can see the punchline coming... Not funny at all. That is true. That is a very Not interesting point. Not funny at all. But Ben, I think it would be fair to say that not a single joke in the whole film landed. And that is rare. The only thing we laughed at was the music cues appearing on screen. Yep. That was it. That's not where we were supposed to laugh. No, we weren't. And they weren't even supposed to be there. They weren't part of the, the director's they vision. They should not have been there at all. But not a single joke landed very so much swearing in it pointless swearing though so much po- like when you get on a roll on the podcast yeah <laughs> Ed- so, edgelord swearing which so doesn't serve a purpose pointless swearing that when when a fuck Ben when a fuck is strategically deployed strategic it fucking be, <laughs> it can be very funny classic very but effective when every second line is fuck this fuck that piss fuck, piss smell a piss it was just I don't want to use the term vulgar because I don't really believe in vulgarity I'm, what, I'm, what I'm complaining about is, I'm not complaining about vulgarity let me make that abundantly clear I'm complaining that the the swearing was so inappropriately omnipresent yeah. that when it was supposed to be funny it wasn't and the thing about that is it's a real insult to the source material there's not a lot of swearing in the Hellboy comic it was weird if any it was very, very strange. Um, very disrespectful of the source material. Like, Mike Mignola built up this character over 25 years. Well, look. Hellboy is 25 years old this year. Right. Um, and this guy went through, picked all the greatest hits, and just smashed them into one film. There was a hint of that, all right, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, just, just went through all the stuff about, and this is spoilers for the comic, but he took the Wild Hunt, he took the Blood Queen. The Blood Queen is the final event in the comics mm. that sends Hellboy to, to hell. Yeah, we talked about it, so you've already spoiled that yeah. before. And drag, just just put it in the first film. it all into one film, yeah. yeah anyway. It was very much like early 2000s superhero filmmaking. Yeah. It's like, just cram it all in, cram it all in. and then Just if, get it all in. If it turns out good, then we'll make up a lot of new shit for the second one. And um, well, I think it's safe to say there'll be no second one. Ben, I did not enjoy it. No, it was awful. It was awful. Um, Shane we loved go, it. We do full... Yeah, Shane loved it because Shane's Manfred, got poor taste yeah, in, in everything, really. Yeah. Strange. Um, yeah. <laughs> should we... Let's, let's, should we talk about spoilers? Let's do spoilers. Yeah, so full spoilers. So we introduce a... a well, we bastardized some more material. Uh, one of the things I took serious umbrage with... You did, uh, um, Ben. Um, you, umbrage? No, umbrage, umbrage was yeah. correct. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say you took umbrage with it so much as you didn't stop whining. Um, oh, okay. well, that's <laughs> how we're going to play it. The whole way home. Okay, not unlike you in a car when I mentioned unapproachable women. No, no such thing, Zing. 
Zing, zing, zing. Um, no, but what I would say is um, one of the things that I always loved about the Hellboy comics was the careful attention paid to Irish folklore yes, and Irish characterization. You've, you've gone on about that in, at, in, at, in depth. Um, that isn't a stage Irishman, that isn't um, ridiculously over the top and ta 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 33 two, potatoes two, two, and a pint. Two, 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 yeah. um, and um, rather than try and tackle that with any kind of aplomb or decorum, uh, the film just rewrote all those characters as English. Which I found very offensive. Well, I don't find that type of thing offensive, Ben, because I don't get offended. Well, it's very just easy. like England to erase our entire culture, isn't it? Just, just like them. It's not an English <laughs> film, Ben. It's not an English film. It and fucking wants to be. Why ben, would you hire two American actors to play English well, people? Well, that's then? the interesting thing, isn't it? Not only have they written uh, traditionally Irish characters as English, but then they've had them played by Americans. Very, very strange. Some really strange casting choices in the film. Terrible really strange. Actors. Let's talk about Ben Diamo for a second. So, people will remember there was a, a, a racial casting controversy about Ben yes. Diamo because he was originally Ed Screen. Ed Screen, who of, you'll of remember Francis uh, fame. He's Francis. He is from the the Bad tr- Transporter film. He oh, he's yeah. he, he's from a, uh, what was the thing with the lady robot? Elite a Battle Elite Angel, Battle Angel and he was originally cast as Ben Dymo and people were upset because in the comics Ben Dymo was Asian yes uh, genetically Asian I don't know if he is British in the comics is he no he's not no. he's American no he's, he's American he's Japanese American yeah, Japanese American but in this film he was Korean English terrible but they've cast an American haven't they well Daniel Day Kim I think is American Korean no he's not he's just American like he's genetically it's Korean it's not great but he's doing an accent and it's terrible. He's awful at accents, yeah. as it turns out. Um, a similar problem happening with Alice, who is um, played by an American actress, supposed to be a, a tough London lady. Yeah, she a didn't tough sound London like she was a tough London lady. She didn't lady. sound like she was a tough London lady. She sounded like she was forcing every syllable to come out the right way. Yeah. Um, you need a full English breakfast, isn't it? Yeah, do you want bl- blood pudding? That's what we have, in it? Blood, blood pudding, eh? Hey, what? The whole flipping 20 years? Oh, you you could see her mouth trying to enunciate each vowel. It was just so. Yeah, the, shocking. So there's two Irish characters rewritten as English characters played by Americans for some reason. I think it would have been more sensi- racially sensitive to have Ed Screen play Ben Dymo. At least then we would have had a decent... Ben, Ed the, Screen is not bad. He's not a bad actor. One of the he's best things actually, about Elite Battle Angel. He's actually English. And he would play a slightly unpredictable, non-trustworthy English Special Forces brick very well. Very well. And the interesting thing about Ben Dymo is his Asian-ness isn't an important part of his character. Yeah, and not at all. You know, you know what I'm not saying? Not at all. In the same way that you wouldn't complain when Heimdall was recast as Idris Elba. Yeah. Because... His whiteness didn't... It's not a, a key thing of the, the character. You know it's not I mean? like Ben Dymo is possessed by the ghost of his ancestral samurai warrior... Exactly. Great-great-grandfather. He doesn't pull out a samurai sword no. and start talking about his Asian heritage. He's just a British Special no, Forces just guy. Just a British Special Forces lad. Um, Bit of a fun, dick. Funnily, uh, Ed Screen <laughs> did pull out a samurai sword inappropriately in Battle Angel. He stole it. He yeah, got, yeah, he got his true. cultural comeuppance. Yeah, that's true. Anyway... Reclaimed. Yeah, bad. I didn't um, like that aspect of it. And from two characters, two Irish characters that were completely removed, Gruagach and uh, Alice, to uh, an Irish character that was completely shoved in for some reason. Merlin is Irish now. Merlin's fucking Irish now. <laughs> Who knew um, that? Because he's supposed to be Celtic. And sure, all Celts are the same. They're all Irish. Stick, Stick him in, in there. there. Stick him but in there. But not only that, didn't know that Merlin had a stand on Moore Street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't That's know that Merlin. Ah, you're supposed to take the sword, you Egypt. You fucking <laughs> pants, you. <laughs> you're after fucking leaving the sword there and making me look a job shite. I used the last of me power, the last of us. Me magic. It was a Gleason. It was a Gleason. A surprise Brian, Gleason. The, the least Gleason. The mm. Gleaston. Uh, <laughs> Brian <very> Gleaston. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> That's very good because it has Lise and Gleason in it. That's, <laughs> that is quite funny. Well, uh, Basically, Brian, for those that don't know, uh, when Brendan's too old for the role and Donald doesn't want it, they go to Brian. Brian. Yeah, <laughs> poor, Brian. Poor L. Brian. Ben, what else wasn't ideal? 
Special effects budget was shocking. Special effects were not um, good. Ben. They got a, a fresh out of college lad who who's a bit cocky with Premiere Pro Premier. and After Effects, yeah. and they got him to edit the movie and put it together. You, um, me, yeah, basically, <laughs> basically. Here's Although the thing. there's a st- there's a solid chance that upon getting you to review the material, because that's what we do, mm-hmm. you would have stopped me from making some <laughs> of those choices. Benjamin, do you remember probably the 29th, the 25th night day of of September? September? Ben, yeah, do sorry. you remember? When we fell in love again. <laughs> ben, shut up for a second. Do you remember a good 90 episodes ago when we reviewed um, Russian superhero movie The Guardians? Oh, yeah. And in that, one of the characters was a werebear. Werebear. And I complained, if you hearken back to that episode, yes. I complained that they spent the whole ep- the whole film building up to him being this terrifying werebear and he's going to do something cool, he's going to do something cool. And then he turned into a bear and got his ass kicked. Yeah, it wasn't cool. That's exactly what happened to Ben Dymo. Yeah, he just wasn't that great. It was completely They pointless. kept like, oh, what is he? He's got a dark secret. He's got a mysterious path. Oh my God, he's a were jaguar. Oh, he got, oh he's not. Oh, oh he's never mind. Beat up never mind. Never mind. <laughs> same, same thing with um, Hellboy though. Go on. There's that whole scene with the, the wild hunt. Where mm-hmm. he's run through with spears all over the place, but then he takes on three giants, no bother. Yeah, but he beats them. Yeah, but he gets his ass kicked by a bunch of lads in terrible costumes. Terrible costumes. Terrible costumes. Such a. Uh, I don't want to denigrate so cosplay, but no, like, cosplayers, cosplayers could do yeah, much better, twenty times better. Yeah. We have met cosplayers that would yeah. surpass that, no bother. Yeah, real, real, real shite, real cheap, real cheap. Even the fortune teller lady with the glassy eyes, she mm-hmm. just looked cheap. Yeah. Ian McShane's Dave. sorry Ian uh, McShane just played Ian McShane huge huge spoiler to the end of this he dies yeah okay just like in all the comics and the other films yeah, and blah yeah. blah blah um, but um, yeah, the, the CGI at the end there where they do the the communicating with the dead thing again bad CGI terrible like Tony Stark's head on a on a Iron Man suit Worse. from 2008 just just a bad film David Harbour has no sense of humour or comic timing I disagree okay I think that the film lacked in scripting and direction because none of the jokes landed. Not a single what was the one of them. the director again? He's quite... Uh, it's not Neil Jordan. I always mix them yeah, up. Yeah, Neil Jordan. That's it. Mm, is it Neil Jordan? Isn't it? Oh, hang on. You spin your wheels there and say what not a sing- like. I thought David Harbour was... If you had transposed David Harbour into Ron Perlman's place for the previous films I think he would have done alright you reckon yeah I think he was fine yeah I think he was the I think he was the and I'm loath to blame a lot of the actors because I don't think Ian McShane's good David Harbour's good Neil Marshall yeah Neil Marshall Neil Marshall who has already distanced himself from the whole thing yeah because it's no good did you not hear about that no where he said that uh, David Harbour and the producers were completely against him from the start and he couldn't win oh really yeah David Harbour was completely against him. Yeah, he seems that. like a nice guy, though. Uh, he does. I I would imagine this guy just needed some way to slip the noose of this fucking yeah. shocking film. It's not very good. It's awful. It's mean as well. It, it, uh, what do you mean? It's mean. It's mean. Like there are lots of mean deaths. Yeah, yeah it's that, they're not intimidating callous. or yeah. It's, yeah, it's people are there to be stood cruel. on and yeah. foddered. Yeah. It, it's, it lacks any kind of human tone, though. Yeah, it's any kind very of smashed together. Like, yeah. there's no human element. Mm. There's like that that whole scene with the changeling scene it was so out of place. That could have been so good. David Harbour screams a lot for no reason. Mm. Baba Yaga was unsettling. Possibly the best scene in the entire movie is the Baba Yaga. That was the most Hellboyish. Yeah, felt. that was the most Hellboy moment. Didn't go anywhere though. Didn't go anywhere because they, they thought they were getting a sequel. No, they're not oh getting God. a sequel. <laughs> they're not getting a sequel. There's an Abe Sapien cameo at the end. Look, the the two. I thought the two good things were. I thought David Harbour. Made a passable Hellboy You're a kind who man. would have been good in a better film. You're a kind man. And I thought that the to- was that Thomas Hayden Church. Yeah, as I the lobster. Here. Thomas Hayden Church uh, cameo as the lobster, Lobster Johnson. Great at the beginning was hilarious, perfect, and everything else was poor. Even the the color grade, it didn't look like a the film. The color grading was so wrong. It didn't whole... look like a film, Ben. I'm so it happy didn't, that this it didn't is have a, It didn't have a vision. Didn't have any visual style like, whatsoever. Yeah, it looked like it was filmed ad hoc by different people on mobile phones. The whole giant scene. 
mm. is the worst color graded thing. Some college student got his hands on a camera. They sent the second beta. What is your problem with college students? Because <laughs> no, because if you're going to have a blockbuster film mm. that was at the grade of a final year short film, it looked like and that's fine. It looked like the kind of filming quality you would expect from like a straight to video Dungeons and Dragons movie. It would not have shocked me if at the end there was like an iPhone brag it was like shot completely on iPhone. <laughs> Where they think that's you know impressive but it's not. Ben did you enjoy how Hellboy's origins were linked to Nazis in World War 2? I did enjoy that Michael because it's just like that in the comics. Why would you bring that up in such clear detail Michael? Because it's what we're it's are we not talking about that? Yeah we are. Oh, I've spoiled it. Yeah, yeah, you have yet. You have yet. So, um, yeah, just just getting ready for Hellboy. Michael and I said on <laughs> on Wednesday. Yeah. Was it Wednesday that mm-hmm. we'd, we'd probably just take a look at some alternative World War Two outcomes in fiction? Are we talking about alternative World War Two outcomes in fiction, or just not alternative necessarily? World but it was a whole II's? alternative World War Two thing. We're taking a look at Nazis in pop culture. Yeah. Um, spooky, I have to burn my different. computer now because yeah. we're all on a watch list because I typed the words Nazi occultism in far too many times mm. to be left in the clear. So someone's well, watching my house now. Ben, before we talk about alternate World War Two and spooky World War Two, uh-huh. tell us about Hellboy's origin. Where does he come from? So Hellboy is the result of a pact between a uh, Duke of Hell. Mm-hmm. And uh, Satan worshipping young lady mm-hmm. um, in England. In England, is that from the comics? It's from the comics. No, it's also from the film. Um, yeah, yeah, also from the terrible film. And um, basically, he's born, so he's half human, the boy part, mm-hmm. and half uh, half demon, mm-hmm. the hell part. Yeah, and uh, yeah. It turns out he was summoned to this dimension. So when she was dragged down to hell to bear his child. Just bear in mind that I've asked you to say what's his connection with Nazis in World War II. Yeah, sorry, I'm getting back to it now. I I, I lost (laughs) lost the loop. I lost the loop. I'm back on track. I promise. I I, I promise I won't fuck it up again. Just go on. I promise. Um, So he's dragged down to to hell. She has the baby in hell. Oh, you're just going with it. It has to be summoned back to Earth. And this is done... By whom? By... The Nazis, oh, bad, bad eggs. Um, led by uh, Grigory Rasputin, mm. who's a throwaway character in this film and mm. a huge part of Hellboy's life in the. Did you comics. catch in the film, Ben, that that Clockwork Sandman guy, whatever his name is, Krug, Krieger, Krug, Kruger, Kruger, he was there. He was there, just as a little cameo. He's a completely different character. Guillermo del Toro took a lot of license with him in oh, the. Did he? Yeah, okay. he's not a robot assassin man. No, oh. he's a bad egg though, all yeah. around in a, in all editions. So, Most Nazis were so Ben. At some point, I don't know where this stems from. We probably could have researched this a bit better. But at some point, people started associating Nazis with spiritualism and uh, magic. And yeah, go on. I can tell you where that stems from. You do it then. I I did do more research. (laughs) Um, That mostly comes from Himmler. Um, Heinrich Himmler. Heinrich Himmler. Okay. um, One of one of Hitler's big, uh, big lieutenants. Um, Quite short, though, I believe. Quite short. Um, only had one ball, according to a famous English nursery rhyme. Uh, <laughs> but um, it, yeah, so the Nazis were were quite interested in the occult, um, and that All seems of them. that seems that to seems have like been well, statement, if not interested, then mandated to at least engage in some form of occultism. Is this true? Um, well. Yeah, so this is where we have to do pinch of salt. This is pinch of salt caveat time. There are a lot of conspiracies yeah, there around are. this stuff. The moon landing. Sweet Jesus, there are so many nut jobs on the internet. There are, Ben. What, what I have come away with this morning, having done this, is just like, oh my God, the internet is such a broken place. Um, Full of but windows. there are some things that there is full evidence for. Don't believe it, but go on. Okay, so Himmler... Round Earth. ...was the man in charge of the SS. That right. was kind of his project, and the SS were the elite yeah. end of the bad Nazi blokes, thing. Yeah. Death Squad, very bad blokes. Yeah. Very bad blokes. Cool logo. Um, And one of the things that they were... Obs- <laughs> Jesus. Uh, one of the things that they were obsessed with um, was kind of defaming Christianity... Right. Um, part of their mandate was to. I thought they just killed people. I thought they were just generic. No, e- e- bad, Himmler baddies. had a huge interest in pagan roots and, very, more importantly, Germanic pagan roots. Did he? Um, and there was a mandate from him where the SS were to observe not the Christian holidays, but the former Germanic pagan. So, 
holidays. That's why at the beginning of Captain America, the, wor- the, the worst Avenger. <laughs> the, I meant to say the first Avenger. That's why the, at the beginning of Captain that's what we're calling it now. That's why at the beginning of Captain America, the worst Avenger, Red Skull is, has been has been researching Norse mythology and that's how he's found out about Idrisil and the... So that was a real thing. Um, allegedly. I still Allegedly. Sure Again, this is, this is all pinch of salt stuff. But then there's all kinds of myths about how Hitler came to power. He always had a strong belief in the occult. Apparently mm. he ingested mandrake root before seizing power in 1932. Yeah, I don't believe that. It was... Yeah, it's all... It's all hooey. But um, this is just where this this kind of origin came from this idea of hitler being obsessed with the occult has been a big thing in pop culture yeah. since the 70s or earlier even nazi exploitation films yeah basically hitler's trying to get a thing yeah hitler's, hitler's trying, trying, to trying to get, get a, a thing, thing. That's, and it's we a better great stop way him. for your hero to go oh <laughs> yeah you can't have that because yeah. it'll turn the war in their favor Hitler, oh. hitler's trying to get a thing we better stop him let's get steve yeah let's get steve <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the new episode of the show let's get steve. the time traveling sam wilson and yeah. bucky burns sam's really regretting being a black guy in the 40s <laughs> it's tough Let's get Steve. Ben, um, what was yeah. the one where Hitler wanted the the spear that pierced Jesus' side? Spear of Destiny, Michael. The Spear, spear of Destiny. Destiny or the Spear of Longinus? Is that what yeah, it's called? Yeah, Longinus. Don't correct me on my Latin. <laughs> it's Longinus. <laughs> you ignoramus. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Spear of Destiny was supposed to possess, uh, grant its user massive amounts of power. It's the spear used by the Roman to pierce Jesus' side. Is in, that in that's the Bible. from Hellboy, isn't it? Uh, no, that, well, that's bounced around a bunch. Some of it's used in Hellboy. Some of it was used in a JSA arc many, many years ago. Yeah, the Justice the Society JSA of America. The Spear of Destiny. Yeah, yeah there was a whole thing. Um, so that one's been around for a while. Probably a more classic one that people are more familiar with is uh, Nazis and the Holy Grail. Of or course, yeah. Nazis and the... What is it, what's it called? The Ark, Ark of, of the, the Covenant. Covenant. Yeah, the Nazis and the Ark of the Covenant. He's always trying to get stuff there. Yeah. Um, but this is apparently based on, again, uh, apparently based on... And we really can't stress this enough... <laughs> apparently based on the fact that there was um, a special organization within the Nazi party called the Einen, Einenerbe. Hydra. I know, Einenerbe. Oh, you're going to... Oh, yeah. So, you, you, you're you correcting my Latin, but you're asking for help with the German. German, yeah. Just help me. Yeah, I don't know how to... Einenerbe. But Einenerbe. The Einenerbe was the occult division of... Uh, the Nazi Party, um, allegedly, allegedly, um, and they were responsible for. They wanted to find evidence that Nordic people were inherently a master race. Mm. So everybody knows that part of the doctrine of the Nazi Party was that white people and more importantly German people are the superior race. That's the whole Aryan thing. What this group did was try to find evidence that this had always been the case. Uh, so it wasn't just a crackpot anti-ethnicity thing that Hitler came up with, but it was actually a re-seizing of their rightful place. So they did all these um, deep dives into history and cultural things, and they tried to make the case that there was once um, an elite Nordic master race that had been erased by new powers in modern-day, well, then modern-day Germany. Um and it was just it was just mad stuff. It's just uncomfortable. Um but that all led into the SS uh, sorry the SS. So I just looked it up there, Ben. It's Longinus. Is it? Yeah. You sure about that? Jai, yes. Show me. It's Longinus. It isn't. It is. Look at the phonemics. Uh, it is Longinus. Shit. Or long anus, even. <laughs> oh. um, anyway, if you have a long anus, you should seek medical attention. <laughs> um, but uh, a lot of this stuff is just mad, and obviously, it's just it's bled into our pop culture. We pop culture mm. eats it up, Michael. Yeah, pop eats it up. Loves a mad, strange World War Two. Loves a mad, strange World War Two. Loves a Nazi experiment. Mm-hmm. Loves a super soldier through evil means. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite ones that I found is the old Captain Marvel Shazam villain, Captain Nazi. <laughs> oh, it's just amazing. Who's super strong and super uh, durable and needs a special flying gas. He cracks a vial and inhales the gas and then he can mm. fly, but only for short periods of time. Madness. I, Ben, 
took this as an opportunity to watch a few films about as you should alternate have. World War Two. So I wasn't particularly looking at the supernatural and the occult. So it's just, okay. much as just weird World War Two. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I can do that too. I tell you what, though. Go on. One thing that I watched really brightened up my day. Oh, because I hadn't seen it for years. I watched the film Ben Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow. Oh, Jude Law and Ben Jude Law and Gwyneth Paltrow. Ugh. Gwyneth Paltrow and Jude Law at their most attractive. Yes, they are both true. very attractive. They in dated, that film. did they not? Did they? Did they? Didn't they? After that. Would they? I, but they should. Well, surely they, they should, should have. They should have. Two attractive people. Very attractive people. Very attractive. And I mean, a very good kind of sexy fifties aesthetic. Almost Jude Law Dumbledore level attractive. Every time Ooh. Jude Law takes off his flying cap, his hair is in perfect order. That's because he's a perfect man and, at that time. And Gwyneth Paltrow's nineteen fifties lipstick, nineteen forties lipstick, never once gets smudged. Not once. Very attractive people in that film, Ben. But Ben, yeah, that film. Is an underrated classic. It's great. It is a truly good film. And better special effects than Hellboy 2019. The thing is, the special effects at the time were awful. Yeah. But now they have a certain style about them. Yeah, they match the aesthetic of the film. Yeah, it matches what they, Very the look they were going for. It is, And it's much more so than I remember. It's very much an Indiana Jones film. Yeah, yeah, it's a little an action island. adventure romp with an evil. Now, here's the thing: this is where we get slightly let down. It isn't really an alternative World War Two. No, the baddies are slightly Nazi-ish esque, and there's a sexy, evil, leather-clad female henchwoman esque, and it's Bai Ling again. It's what? It's Bai Ling again. Oh, no it's way. always Bai Ling. She was the sexy, oh, evil, leather-clad she gets in henchwoman for everything for the crow. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but um. She's a great evil henchwoman. Very good evil henchwoman. Very good evil henchwoman. But, and the the um the the villain's name is Doctor Totenkopf, <laughs> Kopf, which means Death's Head. Doctor nice. Death's Head in German. Ooh. But and he's German, so you know there's the implication. But no one ever says <laughs> there's, there's an implication. In in this universe, World War Two appears to not be going to happen. Oh, good. And there's no mention of Nazism. Well, that's or great. Nazis. Now, Tot- Totenkopf is the symbol of the SS, isn't it? The death head. Yeah, it's the yeah. skull thing the skull with the thing. lightning bolts mm-hmm. and all that So, crap. like, his name sounds very Nazi-ish. And the SS robots name. are look very German. Okay. And they're against the British and the Americans. Well, I mean, that all, and there's an that Angelina, all lines up. <laughs> there's an Angelina Jolie. And oh, Ben. Angelina Jolie. Very, very attractive prime? too, yeah. 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 Uh, straight off Tomb, Tomb Raider. Prime Jolie. Very British. Prime Jolie. I think they probably didn't want the character be, to be British, but, but she could play Lara Croft, and she's like, "I can't, I can't stop doing this." So uh, I'll have to. Nobody argued imagine. for long, though. Yeah, Everyone was right, like, "All right, Angelina, okay, Angelina, Angelina you whatever away. you say, you work away." But Ben, it's a thoroughly enjoyable film. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah. strongly recommend it. I might go back and watch it now. There is a bit of an issue where, whereupon, uh, to stop Gwyneth Paltrow risking her life to aid him, Jude Law just socks her straight in the face. <laughs> straight in the face. Atta boy, Jude. And, you know, there are people watching that going, take that goop. <laughs> but, you know, her, her horrible yeah, I don't know, her Vagina horrible Rocks company. Vagina Rocks company, that's yeah. what it is. But Magic yeah, Vagina that's, Eggs. That's a bit, that is very, I mean, it's so 70s yeah. for the hero to, very sock, schlocky, yeah. to sock his love interest one. But she's really competent, and she saves the day a couple of times. And yeah. she's not a damsel in distress. And she gets traditional. sucked in the jaw, and then she gets sucked in the jaw like I said. And she just she doesn't. Jude obviously knew he couldn't outwit her. He was just like, oh fuck it. He just sucks her in the jaw, and she doesn't per se forgive him so she, much as they just don't talk she, about it. Nor like, should she. Yeah. No, but she like she everything's fine. Everything. Like, yeah. Okay. We no just one think, minds. She just the, the elephant was, in the yeah, room. She understood it was for her own good. The uh, seemingly. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> Really oh, ruined Jesus. the last half hour for me, Jesus. but anyway, yeah. But that's good. I recommend that much better than Hellboy. Saved my pop culture day. Thank did, God for did that. that film. Did you watch it today? I did. I watched oh, it this morning. Good. Yeah, good. Um, yeah, as I said, like people have been obsessed with this for a while. A show that we're both enamored with lately, Doom Patrol. Yeah, big old bloody Nazi experimentation going Nazi on there. Yeah, absolutely there too. Yeah, yeah. bloody Mister Nobody's a Nazi experiment gone right. Mm. Well, wrong depending on which. Well, he's very powerful. Which side of the the queue are you looking at? Um, Captain Nazi is a classic. Indiana Jones, like I said already, all three of those films hate a Nazi. Lots of Nazis hate in them. Hate a Nazi. Yeah. Hate a Nazi. Um, the Big Mac Daddy of them all, Red Skull, Baron Zemo in there as well. Should nobody beats um, 
Captain America for now Nazi villain. Well, Zemo has been re reimagined as not a Nazi. So now, is Red hasn't he? Skull. Yeah, Red Skull's not really a Nazi. He's a man who believes in power and Hydra. Mm. You'll notice we took a lot of the Nazi out of Captain America when it came to uh, film time. Yeah, that's true. It's it's an interesting kind of pushback, and they were like, "No, let's not, let's not do it." <laughs> let's not have Nazis thrown around in the film too much um, and it's not it's not like the Nazi menace it's, no it's Hydra or the Germans it's yeah. Hydra yeah it's very and it's, it's very Hydra. important that it's Hydra and it's very important that it's shown that you know Hitler is an incompetent fool hmm. the Fuhrer is an incompetent fool and that's why Red Skull parts away with him him and his he actually mentions him and his strange ideas and his agenda like he like it's like I'm with the Nazis because it's good for power and mm-hmm. it gives me control. Not into the whole ethnic cleansing thing. Like, they, they take strong steps to distance Red Skull from Nazism. I'm going to edit out most of that sentence. So it's just you saying, I'm with the Nazis. Oh, I'm with the Nazis. <laughs> um, then I was taking a look at some other ones. Talking to um, you, one, one of the big ones was uh, the, the L Ultimates. Yeah, the oh, yeah. the, Ch- the Chitari, mm-hmm. when it for originally mentioned, were, were Nazis. One of the things I found interesting when we went, when, when I was going back through this is the Nazi party is very often hijacked uh, by an even more evil force and used as a means to Micro- an end. Microphone bit. Uh, used as a means to an end. Sorry for the echo this week, listeners. Um, used as a means to an end. For example, mm-hmm. um, by an alien race that used yeah, the exactly. ideology yeah. and stuff like that to, to take it over. Um, I find that very interesting. Did you ever play the video game series Command and Conquer? No, I didn't. Ben, if you play the second Command and Conquer game, Command and Conquer Two, mm-hmm. Red Alert, mm-hmm. that is set in an alternate World War Two, mm. where one Albert J. Einstein, mm. I don't know, that is his middle name, um, in 1946 <laughs> successfully invents time travel. Oh, good for him. And uses it to time travel back to the 1920s and kill one Adolf J. Hitler. No. Mm. And I think killing, it actually is Adolf J. Hitler. Is it? Yeah. Uh, killing Adolf J. Hitler um, remo- alters the timeline, obviously. Does Albert Einstein do this? Yeah. He does yes. it himself. Yeah, it's good. And um, How bizarre. he survives. But then in the absence of Germany and the Nazis, Stalin loses the run of himself. Because he was a real bad egg. Bad bloke, yeah. Bad bloke. Notorious bad bloke, Joseph J. Stalin. Best throwaway line of Hellboy. When he's fighting Baba Yaga, you were trying to resurrect uh, Joseph Stalin from the Necropolis. Yeah. From the necropolis. I couldn't Great. let you do that. And I was like, yeah. yeah that would have been a better film. That would have been a, I would have watched that film. <laughs> <laughs> would have watched that shit out of that film. So um, Stalin invades China. Oh. And then sets his sight on Europe. Oh, and uh, the Americans and the Allies, they team oh, up to fight back. But Ben, the interesting thing is, it's an alternate World War II where World War II happens slightly later. So there's a kind of a 50s vibe to it rather oh, nice. than a 40s the vibe. The Red Menace kind of gig. Yeah, yeah, and you know, there's the early jets and things in it. And it's actually a pretty pretty fun story. Then, in the end, Ben, oh. it turns out that uh, the whole thing had been a setup by the nascent terrorist group, the Brotherhood of Nod. What's the Brotherhood <laughs> of Nod? Yeah, you Nod? see, if you don't play Command and Conquer, that means nothing to you. But the Brotherhood of Nod are the kind of futuristic terror group in the oh. first uh, Command and Conquer, which seemingly up to that point had no connection between the two. Because the first game oh. was a futuristic sci-fi game. And then, and then all the second of a sudden, one was a World War Two game. And then it was a classic and twist. there's a twist! What a twist! There's a twist, Ben, and the twist is that uh, the, 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 the Einstein killing St- uh, Hitler... And then the Brotherhood of Nod influencing Stalin led to the sci-fi world of the first game. That you game. played in the first game. Yeah. Ah, that reminds me a lot of um, Wolfenstein. Uh, well, the new Wolfenstein game where you play, what is it, BJ? BJ Penn. Blaskowitz or something like that. Bla- yeah. Blaskowitz. Famous Great. MMA fighter, BJ Penn. B- it's not BJ Penn, no. Okay. Um, BJ, BJ Blaskowitz. BJ, the terrible... Pamela Anderson parody character from that Baywatch parody show. That is possible. It right. could be her. Um, but probably not. It is Blaskovich. Anyway. <laughs> um, I have not played the game, but I have watched all the cutscenes because I was fascinated that this <laughs> game was coming out. Um, I enjoyed um, reading the reports when 
uh, many white supremacists in the United States took offense to the game Go on. Um, because it painted them in a poor light. It paints I white found, supremacists in a poor I light. Found, I found that very funny. It was a very enjoyable time. So I went and watched the whole movie because people do that. It's not a movie, man. It's a TV. No, 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 it's no, a, they it's turned a video into whole movies yeah. on YouTube. It's, it's great. Good, I like that. <laughs> it's great. I like that. I really enjoy um, that. So I did that. Bloody great stuff. It takes all the mad science stuff that everybody makes stuff up about, you know, Nazi experiments gone wrong mm-hmm. and stuff like that. It just gives you superpowers in the game with them. It's great. You're a head in a jar. Yeah, you're a head in a jar. Isn't yeah. that good? Oh, ha- great. Have you seen, Ben, any of the alternate World War II zombie horror films? Uh, for example, Dead Snow or Overlord. Exactly. Yeah. Have you? Oh, yeah, have you. <laughs> have you seen Overlord? I haven't seen Overlord. Um, no, I've only seen bits and pieces here and there. Again, it was a YouTube hunt today. Mm. I didn't have uh, that much time today, unfortunately. If someone has seen Overlord, tell if it's any good. Tell if it's it, any it good. Cause it I've looks heard... very good. It yeah. Mixed. Mixed. It's a 50-50 split. Look, I, I saw it and I said, this looks interesting. And then it turned out to be zombies. And I said, this doesn't look interesting. Oh, change your mind. Dead Snow is terrible. Never watch Dead Snow. Okay. Uh, I think people enjoy it as like a really off sea movie. Um, I don't find that kind of thing. I don't enjoy ironic watchings. Hmm. Um, so I didn't enjoy this. If you're not a fan of an ironic watch, don't bother. It's very hmm. gory. Very cruel, as you would put it. Like Hellboy. Yeah, but it, possibly even more. Because I watch clips from both one and two. Go on. Because um, the second one is Dead versus Red. Um, right. And it's Nazi zombies versus, versus Nazi... Versus communists. Communists. Nazi yeah. communists. Na- sorry, zombie <laughs> communists. Uh, na- zombie zombie Nazis versus zombie communists. Oh, really? Um, yeah. But there's a scene where they take over a town and it is just the most uncomfortable thing to watch that I've ever seen. Um, not traditional zombie tearing people apart stuff. Yeah. Uh, zombies kicking people's heads in and stuff like that. Oh. Very uncomfortable to watch. Ah, don't do that. Um, cruel, as you would have put it, which yeah. I quite liked. Yeah, it's a good phrase. I like that. Thanks. Cruel. Well, I mean, it is an existing word. I can't really take. No, I'm going to give it to you though. Ah, that's um, good. Yeah. So it's all yours. Should look. Should listen. Should look. Yeah, Nazis, that's, bad that's eggs, bad blokes altogether. My uh, the my least favorite episode of um, that show we watched recently. What was that show called? Love, Death and Robots was yeah. the one about killing Hitler. That and was a very was, stupid episode. Because remember, as I said, I'd seen it all done before. Yeah. And the Command and Conquer Red Alert was one of the ones where I'd seen it done before. And I'd, better. I'd recommend, if you want to watch a hammy World War II retelling, watch the cinematics from Command and Conquer Red Alert 1 and 2. I could give it a go. You could forget Red Alert 3. Red Alert 3 is not necessary. Didn't, didn't win. But Red Alert 2 in, in particular is... Okay. Is very good. Are they up on YouTube as a full they movie? They are up on Excellent. YouTube as a full movie, yeah. They're only about half an hour each, because this is when FMV had to be squeezed onto CDs. Yeah, sure. Classic. Well, I mean, there's lots of storage space on the CD. It was more about getting the information off the CDs. That was the issue. But uh, look, that's a, that's, our, that's a podcast that's a whole, the time. That's a whole other podcast. <laughs> Who are your favorite Nazis? Just kidding. Oh, that is good, not yeah, the question we're asking. Um, what's your favorite mad World War II storyline or alternate World War II storyline or odd and twisted? Have you seen The Man in the High Castle? I haven't. That Neither would have been I. a great one. Yeah, I haven't seen that. I either. don't pay attention to much Amazon Prime stuff. No, I don't have it. I haven't picked up from American Gods. I haven't looked at any American Gods season two yet. Is that out? Yeah. Oh, we That's should been be going for a couple really, of weeks. We? Um, and we haven't paid any attention to it. Amazon Prime. Don't mm. really care. Um, yeah. But anyway, let us know what you think down below. If you go to see that feckin' movie that we went to see today, uh, let us know what you thought. Yeah. Give it, give Look, it a little lambasting down there in the comments. I say lambasting. Oh, okay. That might be because of the lamba- Long Jane is thing. Because of lam- Lambada, the, the, the dance the of The Forbidden Lambada. Dance? The for- oh, yes. <laughs> ben, um, <laughs> ask the people, Ben, because I assume at this point they can't hear me anymore. Ask them, did they think there were any redeeming qualities to the film? Help. Ask them that. Yeah, oh, sorry, I'll just fix that in there. So, uh, Michael, off screen there, uh, the, the other guy that does the podcast that you can never hear. Yeah. Because um, it's not just me sitting in a tiny room in an abandoned building with two microphones that don't work making a podcast for people that can't actually hear it digitally. Um, wants to know, mm-hmm. wants to know if you thought there was anything that saved the terrible not film. Not saved, that we saw just today. redeemed. Uh, aspects some, of it. some glimmers of hope mm. in the ashes of another wide, terrible, terrible Hellboy ridden world. I didn't even like Ape Sapien's hand. No, it was shite. It was, it was all. Good. Terrible. Yeah. Look, there's only but one Ape the Sapien and his name is Doug Jones. Um, but anyway, look, just let us know if you thought there was anything good about it. There was a Star Trek episode where they fought the Nazis. Oh, yeah? Yeah, the original yeah. series. 
you excited about the new Star Wars? Let us know down below. Yeah. Um, as always, ladies and gentlemen, we are on Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, Instagram, iTunes, Facebook, iTunes. Give us now a review on iTunes. Look, we're not really on Facebook very much anymore. Yeah, I we don't, don't really use it at all. Uh, never mind. Get in touch with us on Instagram. Get in yeah. touch with the gram. Get down with the kids. Send us an email. People Get send us emails sometimes. Ding, ding, ding. Do you remember? Okay, everyone. Bye. Oh, we're just... All right, bye. <laughs> Good. We just hit stop. Oh, you don't do it. What have you ruined? Yes, I mean. <laughs>